Greetings fellow Affinity designers. Welcome to this quick tip. We're going to look at using masking and not just using it, but thinking about the masking tool as a primary way to have a fun, organic uh, illustration making process. Let's jump in. There's so many different approaches to creating vector graphics. If I wanted to make a hard edge drop shadow for this, like cell shading, I could just create a crescent and drop it on top of a circle, um, but then I've got to line it. It's just a little bit tedious. By thinking like a masking genius, we'll reverse the process and make the dark circle a clipping mask for the lighter circle, which is on top now. By moving that light circle around, we can actually increase the size of the shadow dynamically. What if we wanted to create a gradient? Well, you could do it a bunch of ways. You could add a layer and then using the uh, fill tool, put a gradient on top, adjust the uh, colors and uh, blending modes and you could get uh, a repositionable um, gradient. A similar method would be to use the uh, layer effects, add a, a gradient overlay, change the um, gradient to radial, and then apply uh, the different blend modes. But again, you have to use the sliders to move it around. It's not quite as organic. A masking genius, however, is gonna combine these two techniques by inserting the object inside like we did in step one and then changing that to uh, a Gaussian blurred object using the layer effects we have much more direct control we can move the uh, the object around inside that which gives the effect of changing the gradient so I'm just gonna make two identical designs um, one just putting shapes on top of that brown uh, brownish uh, rectangle, but I have to match them to the corner. If I've turned snapping on, it's a little easier, um, but I have to make more complex shapes by using punching tools or using like the segment tool or the crescent tool down in the uh, shape maker menu. And it's just a little more, again, tedious, and I'm kind of locked into the shape once I've made those changes. Um, whereas if I use whole shapes and then create a clipping path with the um, underlying brownish rectangle, uh, then I can move these around. I have lots more flexibility and options and I'm directly controlling it and it's perfectly clipped by the edge of the object so I don't have to worry about alignment issues. This red bubble illustration uses a base color and then masks a highlight color and a shadow color to create this really cool cell shading style of illustration. If you'd like to see more of AJ's work, I'll put a link to her Redbubble page in the comments section. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.